Hello, everyone. Why don't we get uh, why don't we give everyone a few more minutes to get settled in and join our uh, Zoom here. I just wanted to ask a few questions. Um, but first of all, thank you for joining us today for the Modern Recruitment Strategies for the Home Improvement Space with Andrew Hankey. The presentation is going to begin in just a few minutes, but before we get started, I just want to make sure that our systems are running smoothly. I want to make sure that you can see me, you can hear me, that you can see the screen okay. Um, if you're having any issues with any of that, please go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and I'll make sure to get it all squared away. Um, and I'd also love to know how many sales reps does your company currently have? Um, we just like to ask this question so we can get an idea. Um, if we're speaking to the bigger companies or smaller, medium companies, um, we wanna make sure that everyone joining us today gets the most out of this presentation. I'll give you a few moments to answer. Looks like we got a bit of a mix here. Um, looks like we're working a lot with the bigger companies today. I love to see it. I know Andrew can speak for them very well. If you're one of the ones that answered a different answer, don't worry. Uh, Andrew is still gonna give you a lot of great content today. I just wanted to say thank you again for joining us. My name is Madeline and I will be your host for today. Today's presentation, the modern recruitment strategies for the home improvement space with Andrew Hankey from Brick Recruiting Partners. Today's webinar is brought to you by Leap. Leap is a sales software that reduces errors and redundancies that slow down your sales process. Leap allows the owner or someone accountable to control all pricing and profit margins in one central location. Whether you're roofing, window, siding, flooring, kitchen and bath, or really any other home service, you can use the power of Leap to make your customized sales platform your own. With Leap, you can take all of your documents, estimates, brochures, personal checks, anything that you would need a pen and paper for, you can put it all in the iPad, all in one digital location to power your business. Now, I know a little bit about Leap. I can speak on that, but I cannot speak on Bricks. So we put together a downloadable ebook for you. And that email that you got for the registration, you can download that email to learn about Bricks. Um, and as well, I'm sure Andrew will hit on some points today too to tell you a little bit who they are. Um, next, I want to introduce the reason you're all here today, Andrew Hankey, the partner, the management partner um, over at Bricks. He is the lead bricks home improvement recruiting team his team focuses on executing and management roles within sales production installation marketing for the home improvement companies nationwide bricks is based out of minnesota and recently celebrated their 10-year anniversary in january congratulations that's very exciting and andrew has been a part of the organization since april 2019. Andrew, I'd love to pass it over to you um, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and a little about bricks that'd be fantastic Awesome. I appreciate the introduction there. And thanks for everyone uh, attending our session here today, either live or on the uh, the recorded version. Um, like Madeline said, yep, Bricks has been around for 10 years. Uh, we've been recruiting within the home improvement industry uh, that whole time. Uh, but recently, about three years or so ago, we started building a specialized team that all they do is focus within the home improvement industry. And I lead that team of recruiters that we specialize, like Madeline mentioned, Anything from sales, production, installation, marketing, management through executive positions is really in our wheelhouse. Um, so we're happy to be part of Leap here today and, and maybe share some strategies that could help you, one, maybe with those uh, management openings. But also, we know there's a lot of other searches, a lot of needs uh, that everyone has from sales reps to installers to admins to office staff uh, and everything in between. So hopefully we can share some tips today on giving some new ideas of recruiting strategies, especially as we enter kind of a more modern world and go from uh, recruiting typically being HR to maybe a little more uh, aggressive, uh, a little more um, going after those passive candidates is the best way of saying it. So um, my information is, is we'll share at the end of the presentation here. Our website's bricksrecruiting.com. I'd invite you all to, to go there. Uh, and check it out. We can always talk offline too. Uh, if anything here piques your interest, I'm glad to always uh, hop on the phone with someone and expand on any of the points that we'd cover here today. So with that being said, Madeline, if you, if you can help drive us here, maybe go to our first slide. Um, 
this information is probably nothing new to any, any of you guys attending, but today's recruiting climate is, is hot. Uh, it's a very competitive space, especially within our industry. Um, right now, from the research we're seeing is there's about 1.5 job openings per job seeker, uh, which means, you know, more or less, it's very competitive. Not only are you trying to find uh, employees to fill gaps, but more than likely your competitor right on the street is in the same boat for you. So we're fighting uh, for the same candidates. Um, we're seeing a lot of shrinking working age, right, in the U.S. population. Um, that combined with the job openings and the market, um, our, our candidates are in the driver's seat. They really uh, can kind of pick and choose nowadays what organization they want to align themselves with. So that's some of the information we're going to get into today, how to separate yourself from some of the competitors on job postings and, and other uh, recruitment strategies. And like I start off with, it is, I think we just have to get in the mindset that recruiting it has to become less HR and we got to become more sales and marketing focused uh, with our recruiting to find uh, the talented individuals that are going to help our companies grow. Um, I think in the past we would uh, we'd post an ad, right? And we would pray that we'd get some uh, good applicants. Uh, we need to, you know, there's still a place for that. I know a lot of companies still get good return on investment on those job ads. Uh, no means saying we have to go uh, completely away from those, but we need to blend uh, into some more proactive outbound recruiting. Uh, to really be successful in today's marketplace uh, when it comes to finding talented individuals. Um, so with that, if we can move on to the next screen here, Madeline. Um, the first topic I wanted to talk about, and just this will kind of tie into a lot of things we're going to talk about today, is just recruiting analytics. So, so what does that mean? Um, we should be treating our recruiting data much like our sales data. Any of you out there, you could tell me what your close rate is or what your cycle time is on installation or what your cost per lead is for the marketing team. Um, but can we tell those same metrics for recruiting? Um, the metrics, how else are we gonna hold our internal recruiters, our HR staffs accountable by having some real data to go off when we're doing planning or projecting how much recruiting we need to do for the next quarter maybe, how much staff we wanna add? Are, are we guessing uh, that, hey, we need three new sales reps, but we're not really sure how we're gonna get there. By collecting this data, it's gonna help us take the guesswork out of it. And here at Bricks, uh, we're very data focused on our analytics internally. And these numbers have helped us tremendously um, on, like I said, taking the guesswork out of it. So for an example, you know, how many applicants result in an interview? So right now, are we recording? We posted on Indeed. We got six people to apply. Out of those six, two of those were viable interviews that we had. Out of those two, how many moved on to the next stage of the interview process? And out of those people that moved to the second stage, how many of those got the job or did we offer the job at least? We're starting to collect this data. And now when we say, well, I know that we need to hire three in-home sales reps. That's our quarterly goal. Well, the data tells me I need 21 individuals to apply for that position. So I can go to my internal recruiter, to my HR staff and say, I need 21 applicants. If we're coming short of 21 applicants, I'm more than likely not going to hire three sales reps that quarter. And the numbers are, are kind of scary. If you really collect this data, um, our numbers internally, we're within 2% at the end of the year from what our data says to how many hires we get. So much like your sales data that we rely heavily on it, we should be doing the same for recruiting. Uh, there's a few different ways you can set up these data points and analytics. And again, these are one of the topics that I'm always uh, more than willing to, to walk an owner or an HR uh, manager or an internal recruiter through. Uh, if you're not doing that today, uh, I'd love to get on the phone in the future and, and kind of walk you through that. But hopefully this lays out a little bit of the data that we're saying that should be collected out there um, when you're going through your interview and, and posting process. So we can move on to the next side here. And, and maybe the one thought just to finish that slide up, sorry is when we're going through those analytics and we're recording how many interviews just take the second round, I think the important thing is just consistency with one recording numbers, but being consistent with what those interviews look like also. So <clears throat> does your company have set questions that every single applicant gets the same questions? So if the main person that handles that first round interview is on PTO and someone has to step in, are they asking the same questions? Are we getting the same data? Or if there's a panel, um, is everyone able to group at the end and report maybe to someone else in the organization 
the same data points every single time. So we're not going, well, we forgot to ask this candidate this, but we ask this one this. Do we have an actual form filled out that we're going to go through these questions with every single candidate? Yes, there might be some add in ones that you're going to add in every once in a while. But just being consistent and collecting the data, but also consistent on what does our interview look like? Is it a, do we have an actual process in place? Um, <clears throat> with that being said, now we're going to treat recruiting like a sales lead, right? So we're getting people to maybe respond to our posting or we're collecting data. Uh, where customers are coming up to a job fair, right? And maybe we're getting their phone number, their email address. What do we do with that data? How do we keep them, uh, you know, how, how are we present to them? A lot of companies we're seeing they're being very successful are adding these potential candidates into a CRM system. They're putting them on a drip email campaign, a text campaign, um, and every month they're getting an email showing, hey, these are the openings we have. It might not be the people that are receiving that email, but those people might know people that can pass on, they can forward those emails, they can copy and paste that text message to someone else in their family or friend network that might be a great candidate for us. But if we meet them once at a job fair and they never hear from us again, um, you know, we want to do that with the sales lead, right? With the sales lead, we're going to follow up, we're going to give them a phone call, we're going to add them to an email campaign. They might get on some Facebook marketing uh, targeted uh, marketing campaigns, correct? We should be doing the same with potential candidates within our network. If we're going to a college job fair day, we should be getting all the email addresses and adding them into our CRM and make sure they're getting blasted once, maybe twice a month with, hey, these are the openings. And not only do those emails show these are the openings, but it, those emails have a chance to tell your story. So our emails, are they highlighting, hey, this month we're going on a President's Club trip and there's a picture of your team down in Cancun, right? And it's some saying, you know, you could be part of this next year. Are we highlighting recognition programs? Are we saying, you know, tenure of current staff? Maybe you have some tenured in, uh, quotes uh, from employees there, or maybe video content of your current staff talking about why they love uh, to work at your organization. Get away from the typical, um, these are the job requirements. We have an opening. And, you know, I was scanning through job ads this morning on LinkedIn and came across eight different home improvement companies and every job ad was identical. All of them said, make $100,000. All of them said they were a great organization, but there was nothing really that separated them. If you took away the company logo, you wouldn't be able to tell what the company was, right? You can tell company A from B. So those are things where we can proactively be sending these emails out and really start to tell our story. We've seen companies also that have built complete websites that are dedicated toward recruiting. So it's not a customer facing website, but it's a website telling the story about your company. It has video content. It has pictures of holiday parties and team events and showing your culture. And now when you meet that uh, potential candidate, when you're out and about the, the car salesman that blew you away, you can direct them toward this website and say, hey, go check out our website. Learn a little bit about our story, our culture. And on that website, there's a spot where you can upload his resume. Um, also, maybe there's a Calendly link on that website that he can, he or she can directly schedule right on your calendar. We want to speed the process up as much as possible, right? We don't want a competitor to beat us to that candidate. So if we can provide them, say, yep, here's my Calendly link. Go ahead and schedule yourself my calendar. We'll have a conversation um, after you review the website and learn more about us. Also for you know the hiring manager, if that person gets on my calendar and they haven't visited my website, maybe that tells us some insight about that person too. But the person that goes to the website and has questions off and says, hey, I went to the website. I couldn't believe what I saw in there. Your culture looks extremely strong. We know we have someone starting to get invested in us and, and we should feel good about that. Um, so hopefully that gives a little insight there on, on how we can maybe treat that more like a sales lead and really kind of uh, just, you know, uh, expand on uh, what we do today. When it comes to the job boards, um, like I stated in the beginning, I know that we're still getting good ROI out there, right? As an industry, we still get good applicants. Uh, we still get hires up the job boards. By no means, what should I say, should we go away from this? Um, but when we do look at our job board, like I just mentioned, a lot of the job boards, they look identical, right? If we go on uh, to a job posting, the typical job ad stops, starts off saying, you know, make, make six figures as an in-home rep. 
here's our responsibilities, here's our qualifications, here's our comp maybe. And it's very HR written, which a lot of times we have to do to protect ourselves, of course. But there's some things we can mix in there. We can start mixing in, you know, who, who are you looking for? What types of backgrounds are you looking for? Highlight, we're looking for salespeople in X industries that maybe you have current staff members that came from those industries and you found a really good transition into your organization. You know, what is the job? What do you sell? If we're targeting someone for an in-home sales job that has maybe never worked for a home improvement company before and really doesn't know the industry, if they read your job board, what gets them excited to sell your product? If they have no idea what Bob's home improvement company does and the job ad just says make six figures, we're a top 50 home improvement company in the US, it's not really telling them, you know, what they're going to be doing in that job. So, you know, have some fun with that. What do you sell? Why are you proud of the products that you sell or the manufacturers that you use? Um, that can all, you know, start to draw some interest. Who are you? You know, what separates you from the competitors? How are you different than the six other job boards that are posting the same in-home sales or installer job or call center associate uh, than your competitors in town? What's the different, you know, factor? Maybe it's a culture piece. Maybe it is your pay. Maybe it's the location. Maybe it's the work-life balance. Any of those things. But again, someone from outside the industry, if we say guaranteed, you know, three leads a day, those individuals don't know, well, is that good? Is that bad? Is that average? You know, we need to start to elaborate a little bit on the job boards. Uh, what does your training look like? Someone, again, coming from outside the industry into home improvement, if, you know, we can say we have a very strong training program. This is what it looks like. It's a two-week program. It's, you know, hands-on. You're going to learn A, B, and C through this. Again, that lets them know this company cares about their employees. They want me to succeed. They're being proactively saying they have a training program in place, and they're giving me an idea what to expect. Um, and what requirements do you have, right? Obviously, there's going to be requirements um, or qualifications. Those are important to have in there. But again, um, I would look at what your competitors are having on there. And how can we be a little different in our requirements? Can we open up um, our, our, uh, our recruitment net a little bit? Um, those are things I think if we put in our job boards, and I would challenge you just to go on Indeed and LinkedIn and look up your competitor's job description and look at yours. Do you feel there's a real, um, are they different, right? If you are a candidate, put yourself in the shoes, which one do you get most excited about? From what I see a lot of them, there are a few that stand out. And I'm like, that wow, that, that tells me who they are. But for the majority, they are very bland. They are set up the same. And it doesn't get that much excitement out of people, right? They might just apply for everything. Um, so those are my two cents, I, I think, on our job boards. Again, there's ROI in them, definitely. Uh, but I think we just need to rethink in the world we are. Um, now when we get into you know proactive outbound recruiting. And this is where I think we can start to blend in with those job boards to really go after the candidates um, we're seeking. So having that mindset that, again, we need to get away from HR and get more to marketing outbound campaigns. So by doing this, we're going to start attacking more of a passive candidate pool, a stronger talent. The individuals you probably want, especially your management staff, are not the unemployed people uh, that are searching the job boards, right? We're looking for the strong uh, candidates that are in our industry, that are doing well, successful, but maybe they have an open eye, right? Maybe there's something that they'll have a conversation with us. Sometimes it takes a recruiter like myself to be able to tap them on the shoulder, right? Um, we can do this confidentially, of course, which helps too. And just have a conversation, see where they're at today, get a test for the market. Uh, what are they looking for? Um, but by doing this, we can also go after peers, consultants. Many of you have manufacturer vendors and such. Start to pick, you know, pick their brain. Go to those manufacturer reps. Who do you know out there that might be, you know, a good fit for organization? Your vendors probably know your company just as well as many of your employees. They're visiting out in our industry. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of them have very large territories. Maybe they even know some talent from outside of your state or outside of your city that could be interested you know, really lean on those relationships you have. Same with, you know, any consultants you have or peers or roundtables you might sit on. Let those people know about your openings. Uh, pick their brain. Nothing, it can't hurt to have a conversation, right? Uh, but I think we need to be very clear with that. 
if I'm going to be talking to a consultant, not only do I want to explain the role over um, a phone call or a conversation, but I want to email him kind of the job description, what we're looking for, so he can forward that through his network and really, you know, leverage the network that they might have um, and tell them what kind of candidates an ideal fit. I'm not just looking for anybody. I'm looking for someone with A, B, and C. Who do you know that can take care of those three check boxes for us? Um, and then, you know, phone calls, emails, social posts, all those, you know, um, do help. But with the CRM system, if our candidates are in there and we met 100 people at a job fair, are we, are we outbound calling them? Are we texting them? Are we sending them emails? Are they getting direct messages, maybe via Facebook or Instagram from us? Those are all things, let's get on the offense and proactive reach of those people. Again, we gotta get away from the post and pray uh, methodology. Um, and then I just wanted to put a couple you know, tips in here for, for different roles that we have. Um, so sales reps, obviously, there's always a need in our industry for sales reps, um, but having a, a business card that's toward recruiting. So um, again, does it maybe put them toward uh, a website that's built for recruiting that just talks about your company and culture um, does that business card have your calendar link on it where you can hand your business card and they can automatically go to a website and schedule right on your calendar and help speed the process up in the back and forth of, you know, when are you free uh, to get that conversation in? Um, and some of this obviously is nothing new, but, you know, restaurant managers, bartenders, car dealerships um, are you know, a target for many of us. But going outside, you know, retail mattress chains, um, that are selling mattresses on full commission. Um, people at cell phone stores that again are, are commission jobs and they're used to maybe a lower base uh, and a higher commission payout. There's anybody with sales training. And I think if you do some research online, you can find a lot of organizations to do a great job of teaching customer service and sales techniques that can transition well into our industry. Uh, and I'm more than willing to, on a one-off to kind of give some more specifics on that uh, if you feel free to reach out. Um, and like I mentioned multiple times, the calendar to schedule the first round interview, I think just speed to market is the biggest thing, especially with these roles, is everyone is going after these types of people right now. So the faster we can speed up the interview process, uh, we should feel more confident be able to land the type of talent. Um, you know, just like sales reps, install, uh, service techs, uh, huge need for all of us, right? And a lot of this on this slide is, is probably nothing new, uh, but hopefully maybe there's one or two pieces that y'all can pick up on that might be helpful. Um, and I've listed a bunch on here, but public record lists, um, going through certification, manufacturer websites. Uh, there's a lot of Facebook groups out there that are private groups that you can get into. There's window and door, there's acrylic bath installers. There's just so many of them that if you can get invited into one of those groups, um, that can be a great area for networking uh, and getting your word out of your openings. Obviously, you guys are doing a lot of the yard signs and, and pull tabs and referral bonuses. Uh, what I see different than the referral bonus is a lot of times our employees don't know how to walk up to those installers and interact with them, right? So if I have an in-home sales rep, they might not you know, have a pitch to get that installer interested, but they have a, a phone and they got a camera on that phone. If all we say is, if you can take a picture of the phone number on the side of that contractor's truck or its business card or website and send that to the hiring manager, and if that hiring manager reaches out to them and lands them, then we pay out a bonus. They never had to talk to them. And now you're starting to build some confidence. Your whole workforce is saying, all I have to do is take a picture. And if we land them, I get a bonus. I don't have to talk to them. I don't have to make up a story. I don't have to memorize anything that starts to boost a little more confidence, right? And everyone's money hungry, especially in our industry. Um, it, it should uh, allow for a little bit more momentum there. Um, and it's also important too, that, you know, your sales managers, hiring managers, install managers, you know, top reps, installers, that they do have a story though. Are, are we training them on, hey, if you meet someone out in public, what should you be saying? What website do you direct them to? What email, Who, who's your contact? What's the story to draw interest? That might be something to think about too, is can we provide training to our current staff? On, they might know there's a referral bonus, but do they know what that conversation looks like? Um, especially with installers, you know, do they have the confidence to walk up to a job site and tap someone on the shoulder and hand them a business card and tell them you know, a quick sentence or two about your company? If they don't have that confidence, they're probably not doing it. Um, there's also you know, retention, treating, are we treating our subs well enough so they don't leave us? 
Um, we've seen some companies that have install appreciation events that they might have an event at a local, you know, um, bar, restaurant, or or a bowling alley, or, or something where they're just inviting installers internally that they have now and externally saying, we're having an event, we're just celebrating, you know, window installers in our city. Feel free to come through, have some free, you know, beverages, some food there for them, an event of some type. And now you're bringing them into an event where it's your time to sell and you get some face time with these individuals and you're starting to build this network. And maybe once a quarter or so you have these events and they're starting to come. And as long as they, you know, they see the value in it, maybe they're reaching out to their network and saying, hey, you guys should come in here. Culture is amazing. They're doing these events for us. It's an appreciation device. We're not, you know, asking anything of them other than to attend. And then again, like I said, it's up to us to really sell the opportunity at that point. Um, but those are maybe some ideas that we can add in today to, on top of what you're already doing uh, recruiting wise for installer and sales reps. Yep, if we go to the next slide here. Um, and then, you know, it's just some additional ideas on proactive outbound recruiting is in person events. You know, um, a lot of local gyms, local colleges, community colleges, a lot of them are welcome, um, you know, or it's pretty cheap to get in the door to have a table event. I think it's important to know timing, uh, especially on some of these, is asking when are the, the best times for us to come in? What can we do for you guys? Um, so both parties are getting some. Uh, they got some skin in the game, right? Um, use, you know, different meetup uh, softwares out there, internship partnerships with local schools. Um, if you can offer an internship and get with maybe a community college, it's teaching a sales course or a business course, um, or um, maybe a trade school, which I know a lot of you are doing right now, but just being consistent on it, right? If they say no, you know, are we giving a call every month? Hey, has something changed? You know, maybe the market's changed. Maybe their school now does have a need or, or wants to do more of these events. I think a lot of times we hear of companies, we tried it two years ago and it failed. Well, it's been two years. There might be new people in leadership at these schools or new teachers uh, that are willing to uh, partner and do these events, um, especially in like gyms, retail events. There's constant turnover. There's always people that are willing to at least hear our story, right? Um, and then, you know, just unique social posts you know, having work, fun at work, sharing that culture. I think in today's market with the demographic of uh, recent college grads, culture is huge for them. Uh, almost everyone I talk to, it, the question is, you know, what's the culture like there? How do they treat their employees? Uh, let's be proactive and, and proud of that and be able to post that on our socials. If they're on an email campaign, let's share those types of things. I think you can have a big impact um, that it, it's more than just the money nowadays. Money uh, is king and people are in our industry to make money, but a lot of them do care about who do they work for? Are they proud to work for the company that they're there for? Do you have good morals? Is the culture strong? If all those are check boxes for you and you feel good, let, let's be proud about it. Get on a soapbox and share that. And I think you will have a lot of positive feedback uh, in your recruiting with that. And, you know, little things like weekly pay to uh, definitely help uh, in, in multitude of different roles. Not always possible. Uh, but in certain roles, you know, that weekly pay can be a huge thing. And, and again, can be different than some of your competitors too, that maybe are offering every two weeks or every 30 day paychecks. If we can offer every one week, maybe that's something that the guy down the road is, is not doing today. And that can be a competitive edge. Uh, with that, I think we're about 30 minutes in here. Uh, so I will uh, give everyone a chance to do some Q&A here. My contact information is on the screen also. Um, my phone number is there. And um, also, I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So feel free to look me on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. Always happy to meet through that way also and uh, grow our network. So uh, Madeline, do we have any questions come in here today? Oh, uh, we do. We have two here. Um, you made a comment earlier in the presentation about creating consistency through the interview process. Can you give the viewers a few tips on how to get that started within their company? Yeah, I think uh, a few things is one, sit down with your leader, leadership team and let's go through the traits that our employees are in success and find out what those traits are. Even ask them, you know, what about, you know, what do you love about your job? What things challenge you? When you started, what was the biggest hurdle you had to overcome? We're starting to hear from our internal employees now. We can take these questions and put them into a process. And I think a lot of times we have managers that, we are extremely busy, right? 
and we can almost rush through these interviews, especially if it's a phone interview and we're on the go, we're in the car and we got a thousand things and sales reps are calling me and I got things to get done. And I kind of speed through the interview process, right? And then what do you know, we don't hear from the candidate. But if we have an actual system and maybe it's you know in your CRM, there's a form that everyone fills out. And so now when that first level manager has that interview, he can email that form to the next manager or someone else that's in the hiring decision process. And it's consistent. Every single time we have a phone interview, we're getting the same answers and everything. So now when we have two candidates that we're debating through which one do we send the offer to, we have consistent answers on both sides. And we can say, candidate A answered the question this way, candidate B did this way, that's the, the deal breaker for us. But I feel if we don't have that consistency in there, when it gets to that hard decision, we're kind of, well, I hope we made the right decision here and we don't have any real data to go off. Um, and it's nice too that, you know, if we had have someone fill in and do an interview and they've never done one before, or maybe they're from a different, uh, they're on the production side, but the sales manager's out and they're gonna do a sales rep interview and they've never done that before, there's a form and questions they can ask and they go into that interview feeling very confident. Uh, not only the questions, but what's the story that you wanna tell uh, that potential candidate? Are we consistent across the board? So that candidate also feels like, wow, they, they, they're very prepared for this interview. I didn't feel rushed through. It sounds like they took time to think about the questions. Mm -hmm. Again, the candidate's in the driver's seat. So we wanna you know, really win them just like when we're in the home trying to win that customer over and we have a sales presentation it shouldn't be that much different. Maybe it even is uh, you're using, you know, some of our partners uh, on here that Leap's had, they offer some software solutions. Maybe there's a, a presentation that you have on your company that you run through the interview. It's a Zoom interview with an actual presentation that you're saying, this is what we have to offer. This is why our employees love us. And then you get into your interview questions. Just some thoughts. That's some great advice. In my last job when I was doing interviews, I didn't like asking the same questions. But then when it came down to picking the candidates, I had different questions, so I had different answers. So it made it different, very difficult to pick. So that's great advice. We have one more question here. I want my job postings to stand out, but I don't want to give away any secrets to my competitors. Any tips on how to stand out, but not give away too much? Yeah, I, I think just, you know, we don't have to give away, you know, our, our company secrets of the way we go to market or maybe the pay structure and thing. But I would imagine if you're the owner or you're the person that's posting this, you're probably very proud of your company. And I think if you're just honest, and this is why our company, we believe, stands out, it's probably a very similar message you give your customers with your sales uh, presentation, right? A lot of the job ads, it's, you know, it's pretty dry if, if we're honest, right? Um, mm -hmm. But if someone can read that and go, I see that someone actually hand wrote this. It wasn't uh, an HR generalist. They copy and paste it off some Google search, but they can feel the passion in that first couple of sentences too. Every job ad says make a hundred grand. The first sentence, I, I swear that I see be different. You know, maybe you don't enlist the pay at all and you're creating some, some curiosity, right? But I think for those job ads too, is to cycle them, is change them up. So if it's the same job ad, you've had it posted for four months and someone goes on Indeed and sees there was 21 applicants and you still have it posted, they might start to question, well, why haven't they filled this? Why has it been open for four months? It's not a good company to work for. Take the job ad down, rewrite it a little bit, put it back up. One, it'll put you usually toward the top of the search uh, when they go in there, but have a few different templates that you rotate through and start to collect some data. Which one do we get the strongest response on? Um, I think that's a good idea too. I think a lot of us will leave a job ad up for, you know, we're always hiring sales manager or sales reps. So we just keep it up year round, but a lot of them have mm -hmm. the needs, right? Your job ad's been up for nine months and people are like, well, what, what, why is that? You know, there, it, it's, yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's a very so good point. <laughs> I think rotating those is, is something you can do to stand out from your competitors, be proactive on it, but, you know, be passionate, share, you know, what you're proud about your company. And I think people will see that, especially in today's market. I think that goes back to like sales 101. You have to believe in the product you're selling in order to like fully sell it, right? So in order to fill these positions, you have to believe in your company and you have to really want the best for it. So thank you so much, Andrew. I know I learned a ton during this webinar and I'm sure all of our viewers 
and those who are going to watch this on the recording also learned a ton. So thank you so very much. I look forward to hopefully having you again on a webinar soon with Leap. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Feel free to chat um, Andrew on LinkedIn or if you wrote down his email um, or his phone number, you know, um, I'll make sure to send it out when I send the recording as well. So if they need to get in contact with you, they can. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Madeline.